Now, CBSS scoring is, is primarily designed for software, hardware, firmware type risk assessments, right? Um, however, like I said, you can tweak it a little bit, right? And you can adjudicate other factors. Um, but for the, in the interest of time, uh, you know, we're just going to go kind of with straight how the calculator works. Um, so you can walk away, you know, uh, and if you want to try it on your own, uh, you know, in your own organization, uh, you have an understanding of, of, of how to do it. So uh, basically the CVSS scoring is, uh, it's, it's comprised of three metric groups, a base group, a temporal group, and an environmental group. You're going to get a score on a single thing, right? And with the CVSS scoring, what they're doing is they're adjudicating what we call CVEs or common vulnerability. Um, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot the E, it'll, it'll come to me. Um, we're a single CV for a particular piece of software, right? Um, and what you need to do is you need to get a base score first. What is the base score, the base vulnerability score for this vulnerability that has been identified? And then you lay on top of that your next scoring group, right? So you'll start with um, you'll start with one scoring group, which is your base group. You'll lay the next scoring group on top of it, uh, which is uh, which will give you a different base score, and then you'll lay your last uh, scoring group on top of that, and it'll give you your final uh, score, right? Um, now, the calculator does make some assumptions, and the core assumption that it, it makes is that it assumes that the reasonable worst case impact is, is true, okay? So it's only going to deal with with this is the worst, you know, this is the worst case uh, of this being of this being exploited. So, um, so I have an example for you, and, which kind of makes all of this makes make a little more sense. So we'll walk through it uh, quickly. Hopefully, you hopefully you can you, you understand. So uh, I just picked a, a CV uh, at random, right? You know, and this one just happened to be Adobe Acrobat Adobe Acrobat Buffer Overflow Vulnerability. Uh, it was identified in 2009. Uh, that's how you, know, you can tell by the CVE number, CVE 2009-0658. Uh, all the CVE numbers move incrementally uh, and they switch over at the year boundary. So this was the 658th vulnerability identified in 2009, right? So that's what that number means. So the base vulnerability was that Adobe Acrobat and uh, reader version 9.0 and earlier are vulnerable to buffer overflow caused by improper bounds, uh, improper bounds checking when parsing a malformed JBIG2 image stream embedded within a PDF document. The attack is that the vulnerability can be exploited by convincing a victim to open a malicious document on a system that uses a vulnerable version of Adobe Acrobat or Adobe Reader. So send them a PDF with this malformed JBIG2 image. Uh, now uh, I have set the conditions for the buffer overflow. Okay, that's, that's essentially all that means. So uh, first thing I do is I get my base CVSS score, and it looks something like this, right? And what you see highlighted in green are what the, the CVSS uh, base start, starts with. So what is the attack vector? Uh, it's a local attack. It, it's going to cause a buffer overflow on a single machine. Um, what is the attack complexity? It, it's a fairly low complexity. Anyone can embed an image into a PDF. Uh, are there any privileges required? No, all it requires is for someone to just open it on a, on a system. Uh, is user interaction required? Yes, I got to get them to open this PDF. Um, what is the scope? Uh, in other words, do you have to change uh, uh, levels or privilege within the, within the uh, system architecture? Uh, and this one happened, it, un it, there was, it was unchanged, right? Um, Confidentiality, uh, what is the attack, right? So it's a, a attack on uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, all adjudicated as high. 
Okay, great. So this is my base score. You see my base score is 7.8. It's a 10 point scale. So this is probably something that I wanna make sure uh, I've, I've patched my, my Adobe readers or my you know, Adobe uh, pros out there uh, because that's a pretty high uh, vulnerability. Uh, however, now I need to lay my temporal score on top of that. So what is my temporal score? My temporal score basically is, is it real? Is this a real issue that we have to deal with? Um, and you see and the ones in green are the ones that, I've, that I selected. These, these are selectable by you. Um, so what is the exploit code maturity? You see I have um, options here. Unproven, proof of concept, functional, and high. All those mean are um, this, vulner like for instance, unproven. This vulnerability exists. We know it exists. However, we have not been able to recreate it in uh, laboratory settings. Um, versus proof of concept. The vulnerability exists. We know it exists. And we're able to re recreate it in laboratory conditions. But we're not seeing it in the wild. Functional. We were able to recreate it in laboratory conditions and we are seeing it exploited in the wild. And then high, um, we are seeing it exploited in the wild and it is being exploited at a high rate. Um, how hard is it to fix? Well, there's an official fix for it. In other words, they have a patch for it. Um, or they may not have a patch for it, but the, the vendor has sent out uh, either you know, workaround information or temporary fix information like disabling uh, the ability to open a PDF with embedded JPEG or, or whatever. Um, or is it a zero day? Is there no remediation available for it at all? Um, and then report confidence, unknown, reasonable, confirmed. Well, it, you know, again, you know, depending on what you selected uh, uh, ahead of it, well, it, it kind of will force you into uh, what to select there. So you see, once I lay my temporal score on top of it, it brought my score down to a 7.2, right? Based on the selections that I made. If I would have made different selections, the score would have gone up or down, you know, depending. But now you see I went from a 7.8 to a 7.2. So I'm getting better. It's bringing the risk down. So lastly, I lay my environmental score on top of it. What is my environment? So my environment, based on how my environment works, remember the base scoring was assuming that I had a requirement in my organization for confidentiality, integrity, and availability to all be high. Well, maybe I want or have you know, assigned within my organization that my confidentiality, integrity, and availability are actually uh, only adjudicated at medium, right? So I, I want all of them at medium. Um, since the attack vector required it to be local, well, okay, so now we know, right? I mean, I have ways to limit the, the danger if I can change it from, okay, needing local access to maybe you need physical access to the machine to actually exploit it, right? Um, and then you kind of see the, you know, kind of the rest of them and how they, how they move, right? You know, generally, you know, how you select one will kind of dictate how you're gonna, how you're gonna select others. But you see with what I selected here, based on my own environment, it brought my, t it brought my overall score, my adjudicated risk for this particular vulnerability down to a 6.8. So now it's at a moderate. Right, so I went from a high, risk, I went from a high risk vulnerability um, to a moderate risk vulnerability, just by applying logic and, and adjudicating based on my environment and not just what some website or some machine told me was true. Right, um, so that is uh, the CVSS scoring. That's that's how it's how it's used. Uh, if you're looking for a way to actually get a, a good grounded score and what your perceived risk is versus what your actual risk is, 